uh, welcome to the special webinar event, Teaching with QCAM. I'm Kuan Yu Liu, a staff scientist here at QCAM Pleasanton. Our first speaker is Dr. Gilbert, um, a research, research scientist at QCAM as well. He will give us an overview of QCAM teaching resources. Um, the second speaker is Dr. Klauser, assistant professor from California State University, Fresno. He will be talking to us about her experience in teaching QCAM. Also, Dr. Glosser has her uh, YouTube channel dedicated to this topic, and the link can be found in QCAM forum post of this webinar. Our third speaker is Dr. Prila, professor from University of Southern California. She'll be sharing her tips for integrating QCAM into lab activities. Last but not least, uh, Dr. Raji, professor from University of Groningen, will talk to us about Python interface. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Andrew. Right, thank you, Kuan Yu, uh, and good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening, uh, wherever you may be. I think our uh, presenters uh, today uh, span about 16 time zones, and so hopefully our audience uh, can uh, match that. Okay, so what I'd like to do is just give a little bit of a, an overview to what uh, teaching resources there are uh, that QCAM provides um, and uh, what we have to offer the, the teaching community. Uh, there are a lot of online uh, resources and I'll be providing links uh, to these resources um, in these slides and I hope that these slides will be made available uh, after the webinar. So if you want to uh, connect to any of those online resources, uh, you'll be able to do so. Uh, and then I will pass on over to my uh, fellow panelists uh, who will give some real life um, examples of, of using QCAM uh, in their uh, teaching. Okay, so I'm sure you're all aware that QCAM is a general purpose quantum chemistry software package capable of computing a wide range of chemical properties. Uh, so these include uh, things like uh, spectroscopy applications, uh, molecular interactions, excited states, including uh, properties of excited states, uh, chemical reactions, and, and, and much more. And if you'd like to become a little bit more familiar with some of the offerings from QCHEM, uh, there's a special Explore QCHEM uh, webpage. Uh, there's the link there uh, on the uh, QCHEM uh, website. And there you'll find um, several white papers uh, that outline a range of topics. Uh, some of them uh, exclusive uh, to uh, to QCAM. Okay, so within a teaching context, though, uh, QCAM can be uh, effectively used to um, teach to both uh, general chemists and quantum chemists. Uh, so we can illustrate the uh, ideas for the general chemists, and this might include uh, looking at things like reaction mechanisms, uh, calculating barriers, uh, kinetics, uh, determining rates of uh, reactions and so forth. Or it might be um, to look at uh, understanding bonding or structure um, through interpretation of molecular orbitals. So this is applies to uh, for the uh, general chemists, uh, so perhaps first year chemistry students. So QCHEM is not just a tool for uh, theoret theoreticians. More advanced uh, topics, um, more particular to quantum chemistry, so things like um, converging levels of theory or looking at basis set effects on various properties, um, which are perhaps more applicable to uh, an, an advanced course. And things like uh, trying to understand the nature of uh, interaction energies uh, by using things like uh, energy decomposition analysis, which breaks up that energy in terms of the dispersion, polarization, uh, and so forth, all the different components there. And so these would be more appropriate for a um, more of a quantum chemistry course. Now, there are different uh, ways of incorporating QCHEM into um, your teaching. Uh, so uh, how you do this depends on how adventurous you are. Uh, so at the very um, beginner level, you can incorporate some of the calculation results uh, into lectures. And so this would provide a more uh, quantitative um, description of, of what you're um, teaching. And so this might be, for example, uh, if you're uh, looking at MO diagrams, actually giving some molecular orbital energies um, associated with those MO diagrams just to 
um, to make things more quantitative. And that can all be done um, before uh, the lecture. Uh, and so it's uh, a controlled environment, if you like. If you're more adventurous, you can uh, perhaps do a live demonstration in the lecture. Uh, and this uh, many students find quite engaging as you're um, sort of doing chemistry, if you like, um, on the spot. Uh, so you could be running calculations, um, uh, visualizing orbitals, for example, uh, perhaps looking at how those orbitals vary as you vary the substituents. Uh, and you can do this all in real time, um, which just makes it uh, more engaging for the student. And then finally, uh, you can, uh, and this is what we'll be talking about uh, mainly in this uh, webinar, uh, you can actually have computational laboratory sessions. Uh, so this can reinforce the ideas that are uh, delivered in the lectures and also allows the students to um, explore the ideas uh, on their own. So there are different uh, levels of, uh, of introducing QCAM into your teaching there. Okay, well, if QCAM is the uh, engine, then um, IQMOL is perhaps the, the Chrome um, that provides the um, appeal to many students. Um, it's perhaps a little bit more engaging for them uh, than trying to interpret input and output files. So what is IQMOL? Well, it's an open source molecular editor um, and visualization package, and that runs under most of the um, main operating systems, Windows, uh, Mac OS uh, and Linux. So there are pre-compiled binaries available uh, and IQMOL has its own website, uh, iqmol.org, and you can find these pre-compiled binaries uh, on that website. And uh, you can encourage students to, uh, to visit that, download the, um, the installers and have that uh, IQMOL installed uh, on their, their home laptop or, or desktop. So as a free piece of software, there's no licensing issues there uh, and yeah, students are, are free to do that in, uh, in their own time if they wish. And what IQMOL does is it provides a more um, fun and engaging uh, format for uh, interacting with quantum chemistry and the results of quantum chemistry calculations. So the way that it does this, it has a, um, a free form, what I call a free form, molecular builder, which is just point and click, uh, where you can build up your molecules in an intuitive fashion. Uh, there's a built-in library, which allows students to explore other uh, chemicals that they um, may not have come across. Within IQMOL itself, there's the ability to do some molecular mechanics uh, optimization. So there's already um, a fair bit of chemistry, if you like, that can be done um, without uh, invoking QCAM at this point. However, if you have access to uh, QCAM, uh, then there's a whole host of other things that IQMOL can do for you, uh, such as uh, animating a reaction pathway. If you've done a um, intrinsic reaction coordinate calculation, perhaps, uh, then that uh, reaction coordinate can be animated. And you can see how the structure changes uh, during the course of the reaction. And you can also animate um, vibrational modes um, optimization pathways as well, if you're interested. There's uh, many different uh, surface types that IQMOL can plot, uh, but the most common of these, uh, the molecular orbitals, of course, and uh, the possibility to calculate and uh, display spin densities uh, and total densities. And on these surfaces, it's also possible to uh, display a range of properties, uh, such as the electrostatic potential, uh, and indeed any um, any data that you may have uh, computed in a, in a cube file. Okay, so this is uh, IQMOL sort of provides a, um, as I say, a more engaging and eye-catching um, way of presenting uh, chem quantum chemistry uh, to the students. Um, there's also the uh, ability to uh, look at um, U uh, spectra, so UV, uh, visible spectra IR and NMR spectra can also be uh, displayed by IQMOL as well. And that just uh, makes it a little bit easier for the students to uh, absorb rather than looking at a, a array of numbers. 
Okay, so the strength uh, really comes when we combine these uh, packages. And although IQMOL is a standalone program, and as I mentioned, you can do uh, quite a lot uh, just within IQMOL itself, uh, but it's really been written to work uh, hand in hand with QCAM um, and works with the QCAM workflow, which goes from uh, building your molecular structure, uh, setting up of uh, QCAM input files, uh, submitting your QCAM jobs, and then finally analyzing the results uh, from the QCAM calculation. And these two packages work well together because there are several QCAM specific features within IQMOL, uh, including a comprehensive QCAM input file generator. So most of the options, the uh, REM options that you use to control the behavior of QCAM have been incorporated into IQMOL. Uh, and these options have been organized and presented in a hierarchical way. Uh, and so beginning students are only exposed to uh, the bare essential uh, options, if you like. Uh, and then as you select various uh, calculation types, for example, an optimization, then additional panels become available where, with the appropriate uh, REM settings to, uh, to affect that calculation. And so this is a nice way of uh, just sort of um, trolling the, uh, the user experience and not, not uh, swamping them with uh, the many, many, many options uh, that QCAM uh, has. And so IQMOL will actually generate the uh, input file, QCAM input file for you. Um, as I said, there's also uh, some embedded keyword documentation as well. So this is what you'll find uh, in the manual. Uh, it's uh, also available uh, within IQMOL so that you don't have to keep switching backwards and forwards. Uh, having generated your input file, uh, you can then submit the calculation uh, to a QCAM server. And that uh, QCAM server is um, a computer. It might be your local machine or it might be a remote machine. Um, and that has uh, QCAM uh, installed on it. Now, the advantage of this is that uh, the students don't have to ever interact with a terminal. Uh, so all the job submission is performed from within IQMOL, um, and many students these days uh, are not familiar with using a command line interface, uh, and so having the ability to submit calculations, uh, QCAM calculations from within IQMOL, uh, removes a lot of the um, sort of barrier uh, to, to running QCAM calculations. Okay, so the servers that uh, you can pull up, um, they might be running some scheduler software such as PBS, um, is a web-based option which I'll come to uh, in a minute, uh, or you might be running QCAM uh, in the cloud as well, and IQMOL can communicate with all of these uh, types of servers. Okay, one of the services that QCAM provides is a, a freely available, uh, freely accessible uh, compute server. Uh, and this, uh, you can run uh, QCAM jobs um, that you submit from IQMOL. And the advantage of this is that uh, IQMOL out of the box, so if you download IQMOL from the website, it comes pre-configured to run calculations on this QCAM server. Uh, and so that means that there's no configuration that the student has to, uh, to, to worry about in order to actually run some uh, QCAM calculations. So what's the catch? Um, well, not a big one actually. So there's full functionality, full QCAM functionality is provided there. So it's not a, a watered down version of QCAM, uh, but it is time limited. Uh, and so the calculations uh, cannot take uh, more than 10 minutes. Uh, if they take more than 10 minutes, they will um, be terminated. And this is actually um, a good thing, I think, because especially in a teaching environment where students are perhaps unfamiliar with the uh, consequences of some of the options that they're selecting, then um, they may very easily submit a job that could take uh, a week, and uh, that's not what you want. So having a 10 minute time limit um, is, is not a big uh, problem, and you can get quite a lot of chemistry done uh, in that uh, 10 minute time limit, as you'll see. So this IQMOL server uh, provides a, a very easy and low barrier entry point for uh, incorporating QCAM um, into, into your teaching. 
uh, and yeah, you don't even need to uh, purchase a QCAM license to use that service. Uh, it's all accessible through the freely downloadable IQMOL program. And this, uh, this server uh, is ideal for uh, running uh, lab courses and uh, you'll see some of the, um, we'll talk about some of the teaching material and labs that have been run on the IQMOL server uh, later on in this webinar. Okay, so what happens if you uh, need to go beyond the 10 minute limit? Uh, so this may be appropriate for perhaps project students who are doing uh, something a little bit more complicated. Uh, then QChem, uh, well, if you don't have your own um, hardware to run QChem, uh, QChem provides a ready to deploy uh, Amazon machine image, which allows you to run QChem uh, on an AWS instance. Okay, now there will be um, licensing uh, costs associated with that, and there'll also be uh, fees for actually running the, the instance itself. Uh, but nonetheless, um, it uh, means you don't have to have your own hardware to run QCAM. And the installation is, is very straightforward. In addition to the uh, current AMI, uh, we'll be soon releasing a new uh, QCloud server package, uh, and this allows for a automated deployment of a virtual parallel cluster. Uh, so this is a cluster um, which provides a truly scalable uh, access to QCAM. Uh, now there's burst computing supported. So um, when you have one of these QCloud servers up and running, uh, if no one's using it, then it will just uh, sit there um, running the head node, which can be on a um, T2 micro uh, instance. So very low cost. And then maybe your class of 500 students starts, uh, then you can have the uh, cluster expand to whatever limits you set uh, so that the students are not held up waiting in queue uh, for their calculations to finish. So that's the uh, burst computing that's supported there. And the access to the server, uh, to the uh, so to, to the QCloud, it would be either through uh, IQ Mol, so this will operate in the same way as the current uh, QCAM IQMOL server. So that's all done anonymously. Um, or there's also a command line interface, uh, which is being um, produced for uh, submitting batch, submitting large numbers of jobs to the, uh, the QCloud as well. And one of the advantages of uh, the QCloud server, uh, especially in a, a teaching environment, is that you can set up uh, multiple uh, accounts uh, that will only have access to the uh, QCAM service itself. And so you, you don't have to create individual accounts for the students on the, uh, on the actual instance. The user management is done um, separately. And so the students don't have any, um, any direct access. They can't connect to the, uh, the server itself, um, which is a, a security feature. Okay, in terms of learning how to use IQMOL, uh, there's uh, three uh, previous QCAM webinars that go into um, many of the details. Uh, in fact, one of the very first uh, webinar, QCAM webinars, uh, was on using IQMOL. Uh, that's presented by myself. Uh, that's getting fairly old now. I think that was done in uh, 2012. So that's been updated in uh, webinar 30, which is presented by Professor Peter Gill, who gives a very good introduction on using uh, IQMOL, uh, how you go about building molecules, submitting jobs, uh, plotting surfaces, uh, and uh, he looks at vibrational frequencies as well. And it's a really a click-by-click -click presentation there, so um, very clear. And then uh, I presented a, another webinar there, number 31, on some of the more uh, advanced features of IQMOL. Um, so this is looking at uh, excited states, uh, how you go about plotting electrostatic potentials on surfaces, how you go about finding transition states, and um, how you can make uh, movies uh, using IQMOL. So these webinars give a, a good overview of how you uh, how you operate IQMOL. Um, and this is probably it might be appropriate for uh, students to have a look at their in their own time, uh, and it's appropriate for those who 
uh, are less able to or less willing to read the manual because uh, there is a IQMOL manual which goes through many of these, how to do many of these uh, operations as well. Okay, if you're after some uh, more digestible uh, videos, um, then Christy will no doubt talk about her video series, which gives um, more bite size uh, and focused um, short videos on doing various um, things within IQMOL. Okay, in terms of some uh, teaching resources that QCAM make available, um, there's two websites that uh, I'd like to draw your attention to. One is on the QCAM website itself, which is uh, under the uh, Learn um, sub, uh, subheading. Uh, and there you'll find a range of uh, labs that have been uh, tested and actually used um, by uh, a member of the uh, one of the panelists usually or there's some other uh, members of the Q uh, QCAM community that have contributed there as well uh, and there's also a teaching repository uh, on github uh, and so this provides handouts uh, with full instructions and exercises for running uh, running the lab uh, as i say these labs have all been tested um, and so they're um, pretty reliable and you can either use these uh, directly um, they're licensed under the creative commons license and so you're uh, free to use them um, as is uh, or you might like to use them as inspiration for your own uh, take on things uh, there's also solutions available uh, for many of these labs um, uh, these are available on request and not uh, published for uh, obvious reasons Okay, other uh, sort of teaching resources that QCAM has. Um, there's an extensive library of webinars that are available on uh, YouTube. Um, this will be one of them. Uh, last time I looked, there are over 50 webinars that cover a range of uh, topics from exploring reaction pathways, solvation methods, uh, ab initio molecular dynamics, constrained DFT, you name it. These provide some in-depth presentation on uh, sort of advanced topics. Uh, and these are um, good for providing some background uh, for, for students. Uh, they can learn about uh, some uh, perhaps more advanced topics. Uh, or you could even use them as a uh, guest lecture. Um, and in this day of online learning, uh, it's pretty easy just to, to drop one of these webinars in as a, a guest lecture. Okay, finally, I'd just like to... Uh, draw attention to another couple of resources. Uh, one is the QCAM user forum. Uh, so this is on uh, talk.qcam.com. Uh, so this is a community driven forum where you're able to ask uh, a range of questions uh, and these will be answered by the, uh, by the QCAM community. Uh, so these questions might be anything from how to run a particular type of calculation. Um, perhaps if you're running into problems running calculations, uh, you can get some support there. Uh, or if indeed you need some help with interpreting the output uh, from QCAM, uh, these will all be appropriate for uh, posting questions to that forum. Uh, and just finally, um, I'll point out that it is possible to run QCAM uh, through the uh, WebMO package. Uh, so this is an alternative uh, GUI uh, for, instead of using IQMOL. Uh, and this uh, may be appropriate for uh, cases where there are problems uh, with students installing uh, the IQMOL software. Uh, and this has arisen um, in particular for things like Chromebooks. Um, installing software is, is uh, you can't install IQMOL on a Chromebook, uh, but because WebMO, WebMO runs out of a browser, then uh, those students would be able to run QCAM through WebMO. Um, so there is a free version of WebMO that's available, uh, but uh, that requires, you, you do need to set up a, a server that would run the uh, QCAM software in order to, uh, to get that up and running. All right, and uh, with that, I'll pass back to uh, Kuan Yu. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so our next speaker is Christy. It's more yours. 
All right, so um, thank you very much. I'm Chrissy Flosser. I teach um, at the Un at California State University, Fresno. Um, and I teach a wide variety of courses. So I'm just gonna give you kind of a quick overview of some of the ways I have used QChem in my courses, um, which may help give you some ideas for your own. So um, as I've titled this, um, I'm using QChem in a wide range of courses. So those courses can range from um, first semester general chemistry, where we've done some sort of lab exercises, all talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, I've taught organic chemistry. Mostly I've used QChem and IQMOL there for demonstrations. So demonstrations of things like orbitals and IR spectra um, are very useful just to, to kind of show students um, what's happening there. Having the three-dimensional picture on the screen is, um, is helpful to kind of let them actually see concepts that we talk about. So things like delocalization, it, it's not, it becomes a lot more meaningful when they can see that. Um, I've also used it in physical chemistry, so quantum chemistry, and that there it's been mostly as a lab activity. And then I've also taught computational chemistry as an elective, um, and that's a smaller class where they have lab exercises and then we've also been able to use QChem for independent projects there. And the computational class I've, I've taught um, at a couple of levels. So I've taught that at, at an undergraduate level where fairly low expectations of background knowledge um, are, are there. So they're supposed to have taken general chemistry, but otherwise they don't necessarily have to have taken PChem. Um, Whereas at the master's level, it is assumed they have a little bit more of that background knowledge. So as you can see, um, this, this is a span from first year to master's level students and also covering organic and PCHEM and GenChem. So um, if you think about it, you can, you can usually find a use. Um, so some of the, the really useful places I've found um, are things like challenging misconceptions. So a lot of students will come in and think things like the bonds in benzene are different. We draw them as alternating single and double bonds. But by calculating them and showing that the bond length is the same, that can actually really challenge those misconceptions. So um, that's just one very simple example. Another really useful illustration is to show how um, the different peak positions in IR spectroscopy correspond to very specific functional group vibrations. So this is something I've used quite a bit. Um, they're useful for illustrating orbitals. And one of the things I really like about IQMOL is it makes very nice quality pictures. And so if you play around with settings, you can get some really nice looking images that are, are good for illustrating things like different types of bonds or um, other sort of reactivity concepts. Um, so showing which area has the most electron density, that kind of thing. Um, again, it's just the, the fact that you can make these very nice pictures is, is a useful thing to have available for, for teaching purposes as well. Um, and then just a few resources. So Andrew mentioned this briefly, but I do have a series of short intro to IQ mole videos. So I think the longest one is about five minutes and they are generally very topics focused. So something like building molecules is separated from force fields and viewing electrostatic potentials. So you can kind of choose exactly what topics you're interested in there. Um, I've also written a basic introduction to computational chemistry, which is not specific to, um, to IQMOL and QChem, but is sort of more of a general introduction that is appropriate for a sort of general chemistry level audience. So first semester um, students can generally absorb most of this. Um, so, so this is, again, just something you could look at or use as a resource 
Um, it's available on my, my website right now. Um, I will also hopefully be putting up some more stuff there, but um, but basically these are trying to give students an appreciation for what goes into a, a calculation, I think is, is a very important um, aspect of it and a lot of times glossed over. So you'll you can find some some labs and stuff out there that that basically don't really tell you what's going on what kinds of things that you need to consider this document tries to do that in a simplified way that gives enough complexity that they can appreciate it but not so much that they run away and just hope to never hear anything about this again um, and then I've also, as I mentioned, used it, used QChem in various labs. Um, this is one that, or the, the start of one that I developed um, that effectively is just on hydrogen orbitals. And so atomic hydrogen and H2. So very simple, but actually really presents some challenges for lower um, level students who don't necessarily have that strong grasp of bonding yet and, and those kinds of things. And so finally, I just wanna wrap up in the next minute or so with um, a couple of challenges that we have encountered and sort of how we've dealt with these. So one challenge is with large classes. Um, in really large classes, you're, you're bound to end up with somebody that has a Chromebook or some other odd operating system that cannot run IQMOL, as was mentioned. Um, so generally there, if you have really large classes, it's helpful to either have an alternate computer lab or a web-based resource. So WebMO might be one of those options. And then um, the other issue that we've run into is connecting to campus servers. And so this is not really a direct IQMOL or QCAM issue, but more of a security settings at the university issue. Um, so we have to be able, we have to connect through a VPN connection and students basically don't have access to that by default. So there's some communicating with IT and stuff that, that was, has had to happen um, for, uh, sorry, the, <laughs> the, We've, we've had to work with IT a bit to get around the VPN issues. Um, and if you're limiting yourself to the 10 minute jobs on the IQMOL server, that's generally great and doesn't require any of these difficulties. Um, but for projects particularly, I did ha have to kind of work with IT and my students individually to really get that going. Um, so that was through the, through the um, university firewalls and stuff. That, that we had issues. So with that, I'm going to wrap up and just say that I've found this a very useful tool and um, can be applied in a wide variety of contexts. Thank you, Christy. Um, our next speaker is Sana. Okay, so I can go next. I think Andrew was supposed to go after Christy, but I can show my um, uh, slides. So uh, I'm Anna Krylov teaching uh, at USC and I usually teach advanced class uh, every fall. It's called CAM 545 and the theory and practice of molecular electronic structure. So this is um, uh, designed for graduate students and mostly for PCAM graduate students. So I require advanced graduate level PCAM to be taken before that and mass methods. So, but, uh, you know, every now and then I will have people from engineering and from organic chemistry and uh, sometimes even advanced undergraduates when they're really good. So uh, what do we do? Uh, we cover basic concepts and fundamentals and we go in depth into methods. So we really try to teach students how different approximations are working, what physical ideas they are based on, and help them to develop judgment of how to intelligently use quantum chemistry in a responsible way to answer research questions. So what do we do? 
uh, as a uh, course activity. There are, of course, lectures which uh, uh, heavily supplemented by analytic problems and a variety of computational labs. You will find a number of these labs on QCAM website, and I'm constantly developing new labs. And the course also includes a mini research project, and this is big fun. That's the main attraction. So projects are all individual. They are crafted for each student based on their research interest, what they do in the lab, and why they're interested to learn quantum chemistry. And very often, these projects grow and mature beyond the class and uh, become research papers. And uh, some students become really devoted quantum chemists uh, on the site, uh, in addition to their own uh, experimental research. So class enrollment varies from like five to 20 students, depending on the year. And uh, the way um, I uh, use uh, QCAM and IQMOL, so I require students to install IQMOL on their laptops and desktops. Actually, now mostly laptops because I want them to bring laptops to class sometimes and having class activities. Now, UEC has a site license for QCAM, and it's really a sweet view. It means that QCAM is installed on our high-performance computing clusters, where students can run serious uh, calculations, and uh, all department members can install QCAM on whatever device they want. So some students end up installing QCAM also on their laptops and desktops, and that gives them a lot of flexibility. So to guide people through how to navigate with our ITS, I maintain a web page where I uh, we put uh, very clear instructions how to you know, request allocation, how to navigate through the queuing system, how to work with you know all these intricacies. So and that you know keeps updated because ITS keeps constantly changing the way they run things. So there is this component. So uh, what else? Uh, in addition to labs, I do sometimes in class demonstrations and I will show you an example because I think it really makes the classes more engaging and lively. Um, so what students use, generally we start with using QCAM server, even though we have our site license, but it's just so easy to use such a low barrier that, you know, no one wants to bother to do anything else. So students do can do all the labs with the QCAM server because all our labs are shorter than 10 minutes. And then when they start working on their projects, it's only then they start to work with HPC facility or with their lab resources. So maybe one example I wanted to show is relatively recent addition to course portfolio. Um, it's a group activities that students are supposed to do in the class. So, and it's uh, dedicated to relatively simple concepts, but uh, as I discovered over the years, you know, the simplest concept cost most grief. And it's most important to get students with the basic concepts first before you start. Uh, exposing them to advanced uh, electron correlation or excited states. So the lab is about bonding. It follows uh, on a homework lab that uh, tells students to do calculations, analyze molecular orbitals, and figure out what is the room structure, what is the bonding pattern. So they have to understand what sigma and pi means and so on. So in this activity, we to crank it up a notch and look at a couple of interesting systems, open shell systems, and try to figure out what do unpaired electrons do. And what the slab shows that unpaired electrons are not really unpaired and you know can give some interesting bonding patterns. So students do these calculations in two or three groups, depending on uh, how large the class is. And then they discuss within each group what they get, prepare a brief report. And then by the end of the class, which is hour and a half, students uh, selected person from each group shows their results. And in this way, the whole class can see these examples. And you know, it's 
it's fun. Okay, so here is an example of what one group is doing. It's one of my favorite systems, uh, radicals, CH3, uh, methyl radical, and CH2Cl, chlorinated one. And you can compare the you know, electronic structure with the parent system CH3Cl, which is a closed shell system. And uh, what students are supposed to do, you know, they have instructions to analyze molecular orbitals and figure out bonding pattern. And uh, in, uh, what is interesting is that uh, they discover that this unpaired electron that sits on carbon, PZ electron, in CH3, it's really unpaired, but in CH2Cl, it does participate in bonding and makes the CCL bond of a partial double character. And then, uh, yeah, so students can compare consequences of this bonding by looking at structures and frequencies and comparing them with all these three molecules. So these are just orbitals that show it. This is unpaired electron in CH3, which is pure PZ electron. And here you see that in CH2Cl, HOMO minus one is really looks like formaldehyde type, you know, pi orbital. And then SOMA singly occupied orbital has this antibonding by stars. So you have three electrons on these orbitals, and then you end up with a bond order of 1.5. And um, so uh, once students figure it out, they can actually see that this is for real and can uh, see that, for example, frequency of CCL vibration is much stiffer in CH2Cl than in CH3Cl. So there is a lot of fun you can do here. All right, so I think that's all what I have. And uh, you can find this activity and a variety of labs that start from basic stuff like that, but go then into more advanced concepts on the QCAM uh, website. And I will stop sharing now and it's back to Kuan Yu. Thank you, Anna. And sorry, I skipped uh, under um, mm -hmm. my giving this back to Andrew. Okay, thank you, Konya. Um, all right, so I'd just like to share uh, my experience with uh, developing and running a, a full semester lab course uh, at the Australian National University. So there's not a lot of uh, quantum chemistry. This is in fact the only quantum chemistry based uh, course that uh, ANU offers. Uh, and previous uh, to creating this course, the, uh, there were several problems, particularly with the, uh, the lab component of the course. And this was uh, largely because the lab course was terminal based. And uh, as I mentioned uh, pre earlier, uh, a lot of students have uh, problems uh, just with even the basics of editing text files uh, using a, a text editor as opposed to a word, uh, word, uh, word uh, and also uh, the command line interfaces is, is foreign to them. Uh, and so a lot of the time was spent basically just getting them up to speed with running uh, basic Linux uh, commands, which uh, sort of pulled the emphasis away from the actual chemistry, uh, which, is, which is what we wanted to try and uh, push onto the students uh, to make it relevant to them. So we uh, were fortunate to be able to create a, um, a course from scratch um, and this was a full semester course there were uh, eight lab experiments of which uh, six were iq mole based uh, and then there was another part of the uh, course that was uh, more based on uh, md simulations um, but each of the um, six iq mole based uh, labs uh, were designed to sort of focus on yeah, so chemical ideas, um, which would be familiar with, uh, familiar to the students. So all of the labs were designed to run on the IQMOL server. Uh, so this was so we didn't have to set up um, a QCAM uh, on a server. And so the uh, systems chosen are small enough uh, that everything runs uh, quite satisfactorily uh, in 10 minutes. And in actual fact, this is, as I said, there's an advantage uh, that stops uh, students from submitting very long calculations. But having the lab centered around shorter calculations keeps the students more engaged. Uh, so it's, if they're submitting calculation and then coming back 15 minutes later, 
um, they lose track of what they're doing. Uh, and so having shorter calculations uh, is actually preferable uh, in a lab setting to keep the students uh, occupied. So the way we uh, set the lab up was to uh, run it within a um, on-campus computer lab. And so this allowed us to pre-install the software uh, and test it to make sure that it was uh, working. Uh, and uh, we didn't, uh, this meant we didn't have any problems with, uh, with installation. Uh, now students were also offered the opportunity to uh, download IQMOL and run the labs from home if they wanted to. So attendance was not compulsory. Uh, and several students did um, avail themselves of that opportunity and, and didn't turn up to any of the labs um, and were able to complete everything uh, from their home uh, using the, uh, the IQMOL server. So the course uh, was a, a final or third year course, um, so final year undergraduate. Uh, it had about 50 students uh, and we ran the lab sessions with two demonstrators and uh, depending on the, the lab, uh, those two demonstrators were either very busy uh, or didn't have much to do. Um, so I think two was about the right uh, number for, for 50 students. And with that number of students, there was no problems with uh, using the IQMOL server. The queuing times were uh, very short. And this is again, largely because the systems were chosen to be, um, so the calculations would run very quickly. So the labs were uh, sort of structured so that uh, the uh, functionality could be introduced gradually. So we didn't um, swamp the, uh, the students with, with everything IQMOL could do. Um, so we started off um, with sort of basic things like looking at just structures and energies before moving into orbitals, um, properties, uh, and so forth. Uh, each of the lab sessions uh, lasted for three hours, um, which by good luck or good management turned out to be about right um, though, of those students that attended, which was the vast majority. Uh, most of them um, would be leaving somewhere between the two and three hour mark and then they would do the write up at home. So um, there was enough material, enough content there to, to keep them occupied for, um, for at least a couple of hours. And there was a few students who were still there at the three hour mark as well. So the topics that we covered, um, we're looking at things like uh, ring strain energies of cycloalkanes. And again, this is just looking at um, structures and energies, uh, so they don't have to even know how to plot a, a, an orbital at this point. Uh, calculating Walsh diagrams, so here we move into calculating surfaces and looking at molecular orbitals. Our third one was uh, IR and NMR uh, spectra, so um, now we're looking at sort of properties. Um, obviously, there was optimization uh, involved, so it's a setting up um, multi-part calculations within QCAM, uh, and then using the spectra that uh, IQMOL uh, generated to try and identify an unknown um, spectrum that was given to the students. So there was a clear, um, a clear task there, clear objective to what they were trying to do. Uh, the fourth one was by far the uh, most difficult. That was looking at reaction mechanisms. So we looked at SM1 and SM2 reaction mechanisms and tried to determine which one was favoured um, for, for various systems. Um, there was quite a lot of uh, details involved, plenty of opportunity to, uh, for the students to, to run astray. And I think that was just because they were, we were looking at free energies and computing the free energies was um, uh, a bit of a challenge for, for some of the students. Uh, and then the last two, are looking at the excited states, um, doing some transition energies and excited state optimizations. And then finally, looking at composite levels of theory. Um, so this was the G3 MP2 red um, and applying that um, to a couple of systems and comparing that to hartree fock and B3LIP calculations to see where um, those cheaper levels of theory um, uh, are not satisfactory. So there's a range of topics there. And uh, yeah, as I say, they're sort of staggered to become more uh, involved as we went through the, the lab course. But by the end of the six sessions, uh, the students were certainly very proficient with using um, QCAM and IQMOL. Okay, so just to give you an example of uh, one of the experiments, this was the first one. Um, I started the lab session with, I think it was about a 20 minute crash course on using IQMOL. So, um, this was just a live demonstration. Uh, we didn't use any um, videos or ask the students to look at, do any preparatory work. 
Um, so the lab involved um, a lot of DFT calculations. Um, so looking at these uh, linear and cyclic alkanes. Um, it was slightly repetitious, um, but we use this as an opportunity for um, the students to, to do some collaboration. And so if they paired up, uh, then um, they could do sort of half of the systems each and, um, and share the results. So we just used force field structures. So these were the ones that IQMOL generated. And this was so that the students didn't have to be aware of how to set up geometry optimization jobs. It was just submitting um, simple energy calculations to, to QCHEM. And uh, this was um, perfectly adequate for, uh, for the purposes that we needed. Uh, then as sort of the, the goal of the, uh, of the lab, um, they had to uh, extrapolate the linear alkanes to get the energy of a uh, CH2 group, uh, and then use that to predict the ring strain energies in the various cyclic alkanes um, uh, from, yes, uh, propane, cyclic propane, cyclic propane um, to um, cyclic octane. And then they were asked to compute the um, those, oh, sorry, to order those uh, very strain energies and compare those with um, uh, angle deviations from uh, the ideal tetrahedral angle and see whether those uh, orders were consistent with one another. And so again, there was a clear objective um, to, uh, to the lab um, so the students knew what they were doing. Okay, this is uh, one of the uh, laboratories which is available uh, in the GitHub repository if you would like to um, take a further look at that. Okay, with that I'll hand back to you, Kwon Yu. Thank you, Andrew. Um, our last speaker is Sharon. So let's switch the continents, come to Europe, and to uh, let's see how we use QCAM and IQMOL for teaching to students in University of Groningen in the Netherlands, traveling from different country, from one continent to another, many things changes, but the language of science is universal. So I use QCAM and IQMOL in many contexts, similar to the other panelists uh, for many levels, like a molecular quantum mechanics course for undergraduate level course that when we teach Hearty Fog or post Hearty Fog methods and based the concept of basis sets. So it's a playground for all the students to download IQMOL for this course. We use the QCAP server. So they, in each lecture, when they learn a specific topic, they also use IQMOL to make sure that they understood and to see in a practice. Also, we receive a lot of bachelor and master students in our research group to do projects, um, and they use uh, IQMOL for the first two weeks uh, and play around uh, with the specific um, QCAM lab uh, that is in the QCAM website. Uh, depending on the project they are working, they will get a certain uh, group uh, to work on. And um, so far, they are very happy with it, and they're re really going through the, IQ, the QCAM computational lab. They are ready to do their actual research after, let's say, some of them after a week or the maximum of two weeks, they are ready to go. And uh, this year, we introduced um, a new topic that was a new course that is the topics in chemistry with Python is also an undergraduate course. So it was very interesting to see that one of so there are different assignments such as a spectrum decomposition, molecular running, uh, writing in a specific uh, like a small Python script for uh, molecular dynamics or uh, neural network. And one of the assignment was about the normal mode analysis. So they we give a students um, uh, a Haitian in a certain uh, format. They make it they make it a mass weighted. They diagonalize it and they get harmonic frequencies and so on. And they write a mini report about that assignments, about the code they wrote and the data they obtained and the presentation. All is done with Python. It has nothing to do with electronic structure. It's really the the topic in chemistry. And it was amazing that all the reports, without exceptions, the students who choose that assignments, they they had. The, in another course, molecular quantum mechanics, they were introduced to IQMOL. They used um, IQMOL and QCAM server to test their, um, their, their piece of code they wrote. So it can also have different. So it was an application that where I didn't expect, and it came purely from the student side. 
Another aspect is, the, is how useful is these uh, teaching methods that was introduced by other panelists uh, is actually make the collaboration between theoretician and experimentalists ex stronger because I always emphasize when, they, when PhD students from experimental lab comes and they have a certain compounds and they are looking for certain properties or they're interested to know some mechanistic or something in a more atomistic level, I always, my question is that, do you want us to do the service for you? Are you really interested? And then you see talented experimentalists, which I really, they can really surprise you. And then uh, I always, in order to test how, how interested they are, are they, are they only interested to get a number and put it in their paper that they are finalizing, or they're really interested to a topic, I just tell them, Okay, go and download the IQ mole, do this ex the group uh, exercises or computational lab that is related to your project and come back in a week. And those were always leads to a strong collaboration as uh, Gianni, that is now a PhD student, shared between um, organic chemistry group of um, Ben Fringa and um, uh, polymer group and my group. And it's really working uh, great. So it can be also you inspires experimentalists to not work only in the wet lab, but also to get some hands in a dry lab. So it was introduced by Andrew about the uh, this, uh, teaching resources that we have. When you go to QCAM website in a learn section, you will see all these computational labs. Uh, they are grouped, dependent on the topic. It starts from the very basic one, optimization, frequency analysis, and so on, to more advanced. Since everyone who comes to our group or also in many of our courses, a student have the task to go through all some of these uh, um, labs, depending on the project. Um, Anna and I, we were always having this mind to put these solutions for all these labs together. And finally, I have this talented PhD student, Luis, who is going to graduate in September and already got a job as a lecturer at University of College Amsterdam. So he will be a colleague and he will be using QCAM for teaching. So all the effort that he put is not wasted. It's actually going to be very useful. So he prepared, uh, I think, over 100 slides, uh, which I just browsed to show you that uh, you see here, for example, it's, it's not for students, it's actually for teachers to use this as a, like in a class. Um, and explaining the topic. So here is, for example, the group one. One by one, we say, what is the exercise? The question is in the black, the answers are in orange. And then uh, with a screenshot on how things are, for example, what do, they, what do you see? In, uh, for example, in the output, where do you need to look? Which energy you are going to take? And then, make sure you look at this optimized structure, here are the distances. So he actually explains what, he, what do you see in a QCAM output. As I said, there are on above 100 slides. For example, if we go to a slide number 18, one of the, my favorite assignments, uh, which is a group three excited states. So if you look at here, to just give you an example that how useful it can be, is that we just, uh, it's a topic of the um, uh, computational lab. And then here you see that you are calculating the excitation energies with different basis set, and then you're characterizing them. And then the visualization is there, the symmetry assignments and so on. And then it comes as a table format. We see what are the energies, frequencies, and um, uh, sorry, oscillator strengths, and also multiplicity, the type of transition that is involved, allowed or not allowed, and also the character of transition, and also the explanation of all the answers is also explained here, so the, the teacher can use them in a class to, to explain the topic to students. And um, sad news for a student is that this material is not for students, it's also for instructors. So they can contact me or Luis or anyone from QCAM. So the, this uh, comes eventually to us. We will provide this um, uh, material to teachers and we put the responsibility on the shoulder of the uh, instructors to make sure that it's not leaked because it's not a good sign for obvious reason if the students have the solutions. And uh, yes, with that, I think, uh, I am actually done with my presentation. So 
Yes, I give it to Kwanju. Back to you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, so we already have a couple of questions, and and feel free to uh, submit more questions in the question box. Um, so our first question is how um, how can we find the previous webinars? So uh, so Andrew already answered that during the talk, um, but um, I would like to um, show you how to find it on our website. So it's a QCAM website, and just click Learn, and there's a webinars. You can see all the previous webinar there, and they all they all group in different categories, so you can easily find um, the topic you want to see. Um, there is a, a comment to um, installation of iQMO on Chromebook. Um, one of our audience. Um, saying that he was able to um, um, build that uh, IQMO from source um, on Chromebook. Um, and thank you for pointing that out. Um, but I think our goal is to resolve that problem. And so you don't have to uh, build it from source, right, Andrew, if I'm not misunderstood. Uh, right, so I guess if um, some sort of binary can be made available that's obviously preferable um i'm not a chromebook user uh and so i thought there was a uh, limitations on what software could be installed on them and maybe you can get around those limitations by compiling it um but uh i'd be interested to to, to learn more about that actually thanks i think i also mentioned Chromebooks being a problem. And from my perspective, when, when we're working with first year students, they generally don't know their own computers and they even installing things on Macs or PCs can be challenging. So it, it's more from a practical point of view that the if you have one instructor dealing with a hundred students, you're just not gonna have that, that, that ability. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So it's like, Okay, uh, so that, that the audience shared the the link to uh, or technical details about how to resolve that issues, and I'm gonna put that link to uh, public chat. Maybe everyone can see that. Okay, let's see. Uh, so here's the one question: Does QCAM have MBO capability and do you use this in teaching? Uh, I can answer this probably. QCAM has MBO capability, and uh, I did use it for teaching for bonding. So after uh, we suffer with, uh, well, there are like two things I'm doing with MBO. Uh, so one example is when uh, students, after students figure out how to use molecular orbitals to assign Lewis character, they always find it uh, new structures they always find it difficult to deal with localized orbitals and then you know i teach them nbo and then nbo can actually give you exactly what bonds are so they like that now i also use nbo when we talk about uh, partial charges so i have an exercise where i show students they, if they look at maliken or Lodin or nbo charges they get different answers but you know trends may be better and then for advanced students they kind of told to compare uh, to use these charges to calculate um, dipole moments for example and compare dipole moments with real dipole moments computed from a function so so yeah so these are you know all good things i do not use more advanced features of nbo uh, but uh, I mean, I can... charges are quite useful yes i also would like to add that the, in a um, uh, qcam website when you go to the computational lab the group number four 
is advanced molecular orbital theory bonding concept where we do what Anna explained on formaldehyde. So in principle, one assignment is already prepared that addresses NDO. Thank you. Um, our next question, uh, which is the typical system size uh, that students can run within 10 minutes limit? Well, it depends, of course, on the <laughs> level of theory. I know that uh, I had students to run uh, two photon cross sections on butadiene with caput cluster methods on IQMOL server. So it's kind of on the uh, high end, you know, it's barely enough time, but it runs. Uh, if you do DFT and uh, moderate basis set, you can have actually a reasonably sizable systems for these exercises. Thank you. Again, in the computational lab of QCAM website, you will see that, for example, to calculate the excitation energy of a uh, parent family of molecules, they are relatively large. So, in principle, depend on the calculation you would like to. For example, biphenyl is the size that is already in QCAM uh, computational lab. And now something that I forgot is that all the com QCAM computational lab can be done using IQM also server, the QCAM server. Looks like we don't have more questions. Um, so if you have more questions later or you're watching uh, this video from YouTube, uh, feel free to post your question in our forum, uh, talk.qcam.com. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll, and I want to thank you, uh, Andrew, Christy, Anna, and Shirin again for the informative talks. Um, I also want to thank um, the attendees for listening. This concludes our webinar. We also invite you to visit us on Facebook. Thank you for your participation and see you at the next webinar.